Hello listeners and viewers. Welcome to Kaduna State Ministry of Education radio and TV e-learning program designed for our SS3 and other students staying at home due to the coronavirus pandemic. The present administration under the able leadership of His Excellency Malam Nasir Ahmed El Rufai is positioned as always to ensure that under his leadership our students are not left behind in all areas of human endeavors especially education. Kaduna State is the center of learning. Therefore, we want to ensure that our students excel in their forthcoming examinations and beyond. Students and other learners at home are given this opportunity in order to continue learning as education is a continuous process. Different subjects will be taught in this program to assist students to perform excellently in the forthcoming senior school certificates examination being conducted by NECO and WAEC as soon as schools reopen. Teachers making presentations will always provide their names and phone numbers during each presentation and they can be contacted for questions, further explanations and or clarifications. The following numbers and contacts can also be reached for expression of any concern or observation. 090-865-0054 090-865-0054 3836272 Our website is www.education.kdsg.gov.ng Our email education@kdsg.gov.ng or education.kdsg@gmail.com Our YouTube channel Ministry of Education Kaduna State Our Twitter handle at @kaduna_moe or our Facebook page Ministry of Education Kaduna State Stay safe stay at home and learn well Thank you happy listening and happy viewing Good day learners My name is Morel Joseph Yayo I'm here again to continue with the topic interpretation of accounts using simple ratio. In our previous lesson, we define ratio as the relationship that exists between two figures. While accounting ratios are used for interpretation of accounting data and provide means by which various items in the final account are compared to other items. Today we shall going to look at another example to calculate ratios clearly for better understanding. In our previous example, we were given items and we were asked to prepare the trading account in order to determine the cost of goods sold and the net gross profit. In this example, the trading account has been prepared, that is the final account has been prepared and we are going to compare two different retailers to the question is the financial account of two similar types of retail store as at 31st December 2018 is as follows. We have Ankeli PLC and Bernard PLC. Sales. Ankeli sales is 20,000 Naira and Bernard sales is 30,000 Naira. There are less cost of goods sold. Before we get the figure for cost of goods sold, normally in preparing your trading account, the first item that will appear in your trading account is the opening stock, and you add closings and uh, purchases. But the format of this trading account is different. Now we have opening stock of Mr. Ankeli, 6,250 Naira, we add our purchases, 12,500. When you sum them together, you arrive at 18,750 Naira. Now, open this stuff for Mr. Bernard. We have 5,625 Naira. Our purchases, 22,750 Naira. When you sum the opening stock and the purchases of Mr. Bernard, you arrive at 28,370 Naira. 
Now, you less your closing stock. When you less closing stock from the sum of opening stock and purchases for Mr. Ankeli PLC, closing stock is 3,750 Naira. So when you deduct 3,750 Naira from 18,750 Naira, you arrive at 15,000 Naira. For Mr. Bernard, his closing stock is 4,375. And when you deduct this figure from 28,370 Naira, you arrive at 24,000 Naira. Now, when you deduct this figure from your sales, now we, we, I told you that to get the cost of goods sold, you will deduct this from the sales. That is, the 15,000 for Mr. Ankeli is the cost of goods available for sale. Now, in order to get your cost of goods sold, you are going to deduct 15,000 from 20,000 Naira, which is sales figure for Mr. Ankeli. When you deduct 15,000 from 20,000, you arrive at 5,000. For Bernard PLC, you will deduct 24,000 from 30,000, you will arrive at 6,000 Naira. So the cost of goods sold for Ankeli PLC is 5,000 Naira while that of Bernard PLC is 6,000 Naira. Now, let's your depreciation. Depreciation for Mr. Ankeli PLC, we have 250 Naira. Add other purchases, 2,250 Naira. So when you add 250 plus 2,250, 2, you arrive at 2,500. That is for Mr. Ankeli PLC. Then for Bernard, depreciation is 750. Other expenses is 1,500. So when you add this together, you arrive at 2,550. Now to get your net profit, that is you are deducting your expenses from your gross profit. Now, when you deduct 2,500 from 5,000, you arrive at 2,500 for Mr. Ankeli PLC. For Bernard L. PLC, you have 2,550, sorry, 2,250. When you deduct this figure from 6,000, you arrive at 3,750. Now, their balance sheet, the balance sheet of Mr. Ankeli PLC. For his fixed asset, we have cost equipment at cost 2,500, less depreciation 2,000, and when you less this depreciation, you arrive at 500. Remember in your pre previous lesson, I told you that in preparing the balance sheet, you have two columns. The first column is where you record the figure at cost when there is depreciation. So. In this question, there is depreciation. Equipment at cost is 2,500. You less your depreciation. And all this will be recorded under the first column of the Naira sign. When you deduct 2,000 from 2,500, the book value is now 500. Now, for Mr. Bernard PLC, his equipment at cost is 5,000 Naira. Less depreciation, 1,500. When you deduct 1,500 from 5,000, the book value will be 3,500. Now, current asset. For Ankeli PLC, stock is 3,700. For Bernard, it's 4,375 Naira. Debtors for Mr. Ankeli is 6,250. For Bernard PLC, it's 5,000. Bank for Ankeli PLC is 1,250. For Bernard is 625. So when you sum up your current asset for Mr. Ankeli PLC, the total sum of current asset is 11,250. While for Bernard is 10,000 Naira. 
then less current liability. Mr. Ankeli PLC, the creditors is 1,250 Naira. When you deduct 1,250 Naira from 11,250, your figure will be 10,000 Naira. Now, for Mr. Bernard PLC, his creditors is 2,500. And when you deduct this figure from 10,000, the answer is 7,500 Naira. Now, when you add this, you have, when you add 5,100, you arrive at 10,500 for Mr. Ankeli. Then for Bernard PLC, you add 3,500 plus 7,500, you arrive at 11,000 Naira. Financed by the capital is 9,000 for Ankeli PLC. For for Ankeli PLC, the capital is 9,500. For Bernard, it's 900. Net profit for Ankeli PLC is 2,500. And for Bernard PLC, it's 3,750 Naira. You less your drawing. When you add capital and net profit for Mr. Ankeli, you arrive at 12,000 Naira. And for Bernard, you arrive at 12,000 750. You now less your drawing. For Mr. Ankeli, it's 1,500. When you deduct 1,500 from 12,000, you arrive at 10,500. For Bernard PLC, when you deduct 1,750 Naira from 12,750 Naira, you arrive at 11,000 Naira. So this is the final account of Mr. Ankeli PLC and Bernard. You are required to calculate the following ratios. A. Gross profit as percentage of sales. B. Net profit as percentage of sales. C. Expenses as percentage of sales. D. Stock turnover. E. Rate of return of net profit on capital employed. C. Current ratio. So, G. Acid test ratio. H, debtors over sales ratio. I, creditors over purchases ratio. Solution. We are asked to calculate the gross profit percentage. And the formula is gross profit percentage all over sales times 100. Why are we multiplying by 100? Because we are dealing with percentage. Whenever you are dealing with percentage, that is, you are dealing with 100. So whatever you are asked to calculate over percentage, that means over 100. Now for Ankele PLC, his gross profit percentage will be 50,000 all over 20,000 times 100 all over 1. And when you simplify this, you arrive at 25%. For Bernard PLC, we have 6,000 all over 30,000 times 100 all over 1. And when you simplify this, you will arrive at 20%. B, we are asked to calculate the net profit as percentage of sales. And the formula for calculating net profit as percentage of sales is net profit all over sales times 100. For Ankeli PLC, he has 2,500 all over 20,000 times Hundred. When you simplify this, you will arrive at twelve thousand. So you will arrive at twelve point five percent, and we approximate this to thirteen percent. For Bernard PLC, his net profit percentage will be net profit all over sales times hundred. His net profit is three thousand seven hundred and fifty all over sales, which is thirty thousand times hundred. And when you simplify this you arrive at 12.5%, which is 
we also approximate this to 13 percent expenses as percentage of sales angeli plc the formula is expenses over sales times 100 for angeli plc his expenses is 2500 then sales figure is 20,000. So 2,500 over 20,000 times 100. When you simplify this, you have 12.5%. 12, 12 and this will be approximated to 13%. For Bernard, PLC, expenses all over sales is times 100 is equal to 2,500, 2,250 Naira all over 30,000 times 100 all over 1. And when you simplify this, you arrive at 7.5. And this can be approximated to 8%. Now, stock turnover. The formula is cost of goods sold over average stock. Now, our average stock is opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2. That is how we arrive at average stock. For Ankeli PLC, he, his cost of goods sold is 15,000 Naira. Then the average stock, that is opening stock plus closing stock, which is 6,250 Naira plus 3,750 Naira divided by 2. We give us 10,000 Naira divided by 2, which is 15,000 all over 10,000 divided by 2. When you must divide 10,000 by 2, you will arrive at 5,000. Now, if you divide 15,000 by 5,000, you will arrive at 3. That means the stock over is 3 times. This simplifies that the sales is in good shape. That is, the stock over is moving. Then for better PLC, we have 24,000 all over 5,625 plus 4,375. When you sum the opening stock and the closing stock, you arrive at 10,000. So we have 24,000 all over 10,000 divided by 2. When you divide 10,000 by 2, you arrive at 5,000. So 24,000 divided by 2 will give us 4.8 and we approximate this to five times. That is, the stock turnover is five times. How many times Bernard makes sales? Now, the next one is rate of return on net profit on capital employed. The rate of return of net profit on capital employed. The formula is net profit all over capital employed. For Ankeli family, PLC, his net profit is 2,500 based on the final account we have seen. And the capital employed there is 11,750 times 100. So when you simplify this, you arrive at 21%. For Bernard PLC, his net profit is 2,500 and the capital employed is 14,500. Then multiply by 100, which will give us 16%. Now, we are also asked to calculate the current ratio. And the formula for calculating the current ratio is current asset all over current liability. Now, for Ankelif PLC, we have 11,250. That is, the sum total of his current asset is 11,250. And his current liability is 1,250. When you divide 11,250 by 1,250, you arrive at 9. The answer is 9. This shows that the company has enough money to take care of its responsibility, financial responsibility and it should also continue for mr bernard his current asset the sum total of his current asset is ten thousand naira, and his current liability is two thousand five hundred when you divide ten thousand by two thousand five hundred you arrive at four 
phone. When you divide 10,000 by 2, 5, you, the answer is 4. This also shows that Mr. Bernard PLC can take care of its responsibility. That is, it will meet its financial obligation. Now, G, we are asked to calculate the asset test ratio. And the formula is current asset minus stock. All of our current liabilities for Ankeli PLC. The total current asset is 11,250 and the stock is 3,750. Now, when you deduct 3,750 from 11,250, your answer will be 7,500. Now, when you divide 7,500 by 1,250, you arrive at 6. For Bernard PLC, his own current asset is 10,000 minus stock. The stock is 4,375. When you deduct 4,375 from 10,000, you arrive at 5,625. So for Mr. Bernard, we have 5,625 all over 2,500. And when you divide this, you arrive at 2.25, and you approximate this to 2. H, we are asked to calculate the relationship between debtors and sales. So the ratio of debtors and sales is debt, and the formula is debtors all over sales times 365 days. Why are we using 365 days? We say that the financial period is one year, and in a year we have 365 days. So we are calculating this in order to know when will the debtors be able to settle their debts. So for, for Mr. Ankeli, his debtors are 6,250 of our sales, which is 20,000 times 600 and 365 days. And when you calculate this, it will give you 114 days. This means this amount, that is the, the figure for the debtors, it will take them 114 days in order to settle their debts. This means the debtors will tie the company down. Then for Mr. Bernard, we have 5,000 for his debtors and 30,000 for sales times 365 days. Now, when will Bernard debtors settle this? We have, when you simplify this, you arrive at 60.8 and you approximate to 61 days. So it will take Bernard's debtors 61 days to settle their debts. We are also asked to calculate the creditors stock purchase ratio. Now, the formula is creditors all over purchases times 365 days. For Ankeli PLC, the creditors, we have 1,250 and the purchases is 12,500 times 365 days. When you calculate this, you have 36 days 0.5, which is approximate to seven, 37 days. Creditors stock purchase ratio. The formula is creditors over purchases times 365 days. For Ankeli PLC, the creditors figure is 1,250, while the purchases figure is 12,500 times 600 and 365 days. And when you calculate this, you will have 36.5, which will approximate to 30 seven days. That means it will take Mr. Ankeli to settle his debt in 37 days. For Bernard, we have 2,500 all over 22,750 times 365 days all over one. When you calculate this, you arrive at 40 days. It means that Bernard PLC will 
take 40 days to settle its debtors and creditors. In summary, accounting ratios are used to show the relationship that exists between financial data and are also used to compare the items in the final account. In our next lesson, we shall be looking at the relationship between markup and margin. Before I leave, I have an assignment for you. Soft exercise 36, 37.3 pages 596 to 597 in Essential Financial Accounting for Senior Secondary Schools by R.A. Ibrahim and R.A. Kazim. Thank you for listening. I still remain Morel Joseph Yayo. Stay home, stay safe, keep learning. I repeat my number again, 080-738684-21. Stay home, stay safe, keep learning.